Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I stand in support of this, the Tariff Malaysia Free Trade Agreement Amendment Bill, and this its first reading. This bill amends the Tariff Act 1988 in order to implement the Malaysia New Zealand Free Trade Agreement signed in Kuala Lumpur in October last year. The bill's amendments will allow transitional safeguard measures to be applied in appropriate circumstances to imports originating from Malaysia. Like all free trade agreements ratified in this House during this Government's terms, negotiations for this agreement were started by the Labor Government in this instance back in 2005 under the Honourable Jim Sutton and carried out with diligence, competence and leadership by the then Minister of Trade and the next New Zealand Prime Minister, the Honourable Phil Goff. So it would be good if the National Government could actually give credit where credit is due when it comes to these sort of bipartisan matters concerning trade. This deal expands on the ACN Australia New Zealand Free Trade Agreement signed in February 2009. It cuts trade barriers between Malaysia and New Zealand swifter and to a greater extent than the ACN Australia New Zealand Free Trade Agreement. What this FTA underlines is the close relationship that New Zealand has built with Malaysia over the decades. We hope it will provide a platform for even stronger ties. We've heard the stats around the growth in trade between the two countries, and we all know that if New Zealand is to develop sustainable economic growth, then it must follow a policy of export-led growth. It must work to foster an economic environment where key competencies around export strategy must be encouraged in any way, shape and form, and it must continue to foster and develop and ratify key relationships with our major trading partners. Mr Speaker, Bill English has stated that his government's goal is to drive an export-led recovery, and I quote, we're looking for how to make sure we get a sustainable export-led recovery. But, Mr Speaker, in my view, there are three things that are holding back companies in New Zealand from optimising their export growth and, therefore, New Zealand's sustainable export growth and wealth creation. And Bill English's government, Mr Speaker, is not only doing nothing to address these, but is, in fact, making them worse. This government's actions are, therefore, increasingly sub-optimising any chance New Zealand has of increasing economic growth through the further development of the export sector. The three things holding New Zealand companies back from optimising export opportunities are one, a lack of affordable capital, two, a lack of true export competency, and three, an outdated monetary policy. Now let me expand on these, Mr Speaker. First, the lack of affordable capital. Only around 10% of all business loans are unsecured. This means that around 90% of all loans are business loans are secured against assets of the owner of the company. This is often the family house. This attitude and access to capital will never allow the country to address the issue that we overvalue capital and undervalue labour in this country. Basically, this means that we prefer to employ cheap labour rather than spend money on capital in order to improve productivity. This issue has not been addressed by the current government, but rather it has worked against this principle, Mr Speaker, in two ways. First, research has shown that the higher the wage, the more likely the company is to spend money on capital improvements. <clears throat> this does not Order. affect... Member. No, what I, this is very relevant, Mr Speaker, because what I'm... Order. <clears throat> Order. The member must relate it back to the free trade agreement. So happy that you use these, but you must tie it back. This is a first reading speech. You must tie it back into the substance of the bill. Stuart Nash. Uh, the reason why it will, it's a very good agreement, as I mentioned, but one of the reasons it will not be optimised is because I do not think that this government has addressed three issues. And one of the issues that will allow, that will ensure this government does not optimise is an access to affordable capital. As I have shown, as I will point out, the, more the, more, the higher the wages, the more likely a company is to spend money on capital improvements. This does not, in fact, lead to less jobs, but rather greater efficiencies, more jobs as companies grow, and more importantly, a greater propensity to scale up for export growth and, in fact, take advantage of this sort of free trade agreement. <clears throat> the second thing this government has suggested that it will do is sell Kiwi Bank. This is the government-owned bank set up by the last Labour-led government. Order. 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 Um, the member is well off the track. 
I've, I've, I've mentioned that you must, we're talking about a free trade agreement, um, and you must talk about that. Um, it's about relevancy, and if the member doesn't, then I'll terminate the speech. You can talk, you can mention some things, you must tie it back into the substance of the bill. Can Stuart I Nash. address that point of order, please, Mr Smith? No, I've ruled. I've ruled. I'm inviting you to continue. OK. Thank you. Mr Speaker, as we know, we are a nation of small to medium enterprises. This means that 97% of New Zealand's businesses consist of 19 members or less. Now, when we're talking about a free trade agreement, what we're talking about is an ability of companies to scale up and meet export markets, to, gr to grow to a point where they can actually export. Very few of these companies, of these 97% of companies, can afford to employ a full-time international marketing or market development manager in Malaysia, which is what this free trade agreement is about, let alone open an office in a foreign country like Malaysia, with Malaysian language is different, the Malaysian legal system is different, and the Malaysian business culture is different, which is what we're talking about in this free trade agreement. So what we need is an agency, Mr Speaker, that are the ears and eyes in global markets. Now, when we're talking about this free trade agreement, Mr Speaker, we come back to the very important point that, in fact, the minister responsible for the uh, New Zealand Trade and Enterprise actually cut $10 million from New Zealand Trade and Enterprise operational budget in 2009. So I suppose my question is to the government and to Mr Brownlee, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee, is with the sort of free trade agreement, how does he see New Zealand companies optimising their growth with this sort of agreement in pay, place? And I hate to think what he is going to cut from this year's budget. I actually asked the retiring CEO of the New Zealand Trade and Enterprise if his organisation was New Zealand's international marketing and market development organisation in places like Malaysia, and his response was, if only. Now, the third point holding New Zealand's economic development back in order to take advantage of a free trade agreement like the one between New Zealand and Malaysia is our current monetary policy. Now, I'd just like to elaborate on this a little bit, Mr Speaker, because it cuts right to the heart of what a free trade agreement is about. The vast majority in trade between New Zealand and Malaysia is in US dollars. What tends to happen is we buy and sell in US dollars, therefore the cross rate is most important to companies that are doing this trade and are expected to take advantage of this FTA. But I would like to ask a question again, is how can anyone in this, can anyone in this House tell me how a company can effectively forecast and business plan on the international market like the Malaysian market. Sorry to interrupt the honourable member, but the time has come for me to leave the chair. This debate is interrupted. I shall resume the chair at 7.30.